and welcome to Woman Vision TV. It's where women talk. I'm your host, Nadia Giordano. My guest today is author Colleen Baldrica. I just finished reading her book, Tree Spirited Woman. Let's go talk to her and hear more about it. Hi Colleen, it's good to have you in the studio today. And I thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Well, I loved reading your book, Tree Spirited Woman. It was uh, delightful, and I understand it's won several awards. Tell us what some of those are. Well, it was a finalist in the USA Best Book Awards. It was a finalist in the Indie Excellence Awards, which mm -hmm. are all independent book things, mm -hmm. and took a bronze in the IPI Awards. I, I knew it, about IPI. The independent book publishers. In 2012, it was voted a favorite book by a Minnesota female author by the readers of the Minnesota Women's Press in their annual oh. survey. And I thought that was kind of great since it's local people more so yeah. and how they can do that. So I was, it made me feel pretty good. Oh, I think so. Absolutely. Thanks. Well, your book has a Native American theme and I believe you have Native American heritage. Is that correct? Yes. My grandmother was um, Ojibwe. Mm -hmm. Chippewa is what she always said. She was um, from White Earth Indian Reservation. When she was young, her and her sisters were all taken out of their home and had to go to the boarding schools. Mm -hmm. So they were up in Monoman, and then they had to be sent down to Pipestone, where they could become Americanized. Mm -hmm. And so Grandma said it was a terrible time. Boarding schools were awful. She never talked about them growing up, and she lived with me when most of my life. And then she went up to White Earth, and ironically, Grandma wouldn't speak about it, didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. However, it was very important that we be put on the Indian rolls. And when I was born, you had to be registered. So I am a card-carrying, white earth, Pembina band, Ojibwe. Oh, My card says Chippewa. Isn't it great that she did that? It is, it yeah. is. You know, and looking back, as an adolescent, I wish I really would have pushed her. She would have talked if I would have pushed it. Mm -hmm. But as adolescents, mm -hmm. we don't think about it. No, no, we just no. take it for granted. She doesn't want to talk about it. Yes. But yeah, it would have been great if you could have been able to have done that. Yeah, yes. yes. Well, it's always interesting to hear about some of the inspirations and the thought processes that go about creating a book. What were some of the things that inspired this book? When this book first began, um, I'll give you just a little bit of background. I was a single mom and I was studying mm -hmm. college. And my first quarter of college, I met a, a Lakota medicine man named Charlie. I did not know him as anything else other than Charlie. Only mm -hmm. knew him one quarter. I went to school, we talked a lot, but I was also struggling. I was struggling with my faith. I was struggling with my life. I was mm -hmm. struggling, what do I do? Yeah. And I went out into the woods and I was praying. And I asked, you know, I was asking God, what do I do? And the trees basically, I believe, spoke to me in many ways. It kind of looked up your branches. You've got to let go and you've got to trust. And I'm giving you a brief version. Mm -hmm. um, but I could literally feel my hands gnarl and all of the junk being pulled from me. Well, when I walked back into the college, the first person I saw was Charlie. And I told him about this. And he said, Colleen, that is extremely a powerful experience. I am giving you the name, and he said it in Lakota, it meant tree-spirited woman. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think anything really about it, but it was a few years later I had this dream. And it was as clear as I'm talking to you mm -hmm. that someday you will write this book. It will be a cross between Siddhartha and the prophet. It would be between a young woman and an older woman. Mm -hmm. It would all take um, place in the woods, but you have to grow into it. So. It was probably about 15 years later when I finally started it. Now, I wasn't an author. I wasn't a writer. I would do my papers that I had to do for school. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, do some journaling. Yeah. So it was something that I believed so strongly I had to do. And that is why, how the book came to be. Oh, you know, that is so great because it took its time mm -hmm. to develop. You took your time to develop and it ended up with a really excellent book. Now, without giving the ending away, there are some lessons throughout the book, and there might be some favorites, whether they're your favorites or favorites of your readers. Tell us about a couple of the favorite lessons that people talk about. 
You know, I get a lot of letters or emails mm -hmm. from people that have read my book mm -hmm. and thanking me. And many of the chapters are very different. Yeah. Some are on the chapter after they, one woman wrote to me and said, you know, I lost my husband two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I, some, you gave me this book many, many, a, a year before, and you said, someday you will pick it up okay. when you need it. She says, I read it, and I cannot thank you. I needed to read what you wrote, and I thank you for that. I've had other people call me and say they love the chapter on truth. Mm -hmm. I think all the chapters are, you know, they're all kind of my favorites, because yeah. I believe whoever is supposed to read it at the time will get what message it is that their heart is needing. I really believe the gift of listening is probably my f the most important personally for me mm -hmm. because without our gift of listening, we're not hearing the other person. And our listening isn't just yeah. through our words, it's through our body language, our tone, but we're reading the whole situation. And in order to really understand people, to be able to be helpful in any way is to really, really listen. It is the best gift we can give. It doesn't cost a penny, and anybody can have it. And but it's a gift that will be treasured long after the situation is over. So I think, for me, listening. That makes sense. That makes sense. I agree with you too. Mm -hmm. That one and uh, uh, the one on death and truth, mm -hmm. those all spoke to me and, and resonated. You speak to groups around the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, mm -hmm. and what are these lessons the things that you talk about, or is it something else, and what kind of groups would be interested in hearing you talk? Oh, thanks. It, well, I have presented for a number of women's retreats, okay. and when I talk at the retreats, I've done workshops on the art of letting go, mm -hmm. and the power of words. I've spoken to a number of libraries, and they want you to talk about the book, how the story, yeah. kind of the yeah. story before the story. Yep, yep, exactly. And I've also talked to a number of church groups that also kind of want me to talk about the story behind the story. Because the book is very spiritual, mm -hmm. um, and it's a book that where anybody is in their faith journey, I think it opens up to them. And so women's groups and churches really resonate with that. I've spoken as far as Deadwood, South Dakota, <laughs> War Road, Minnesota, up at the library. Yeah. They invited me up there. I get to speak to a number of another, I've got a few church groups that have mm -hmm. asked me to come. I've spoken for women's dinners, women's groups. And again, they are kind of the story before the story. They want to know mm -hmm. how it came. Then or not, again, how to be published. Yes. Then once you are published, yeah. how do you market your yes. book? Yes. So, because the, there's a lot of wannabe and would-be and writers that are in these women's groups that I've gone to and so I get to share a lot of my experiences with them and how I've gotten the book out there and what I've done. Well how great and before we go is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you want to be sure that the viewers know? I would like them to know to listen to that voice within mm -hmm. and you know we all get that Oh, I really should pick up that phone and call that person. I should definitely, oh, I should just go do this. Mm -hmm. or, and so often we say, oh, yeah, I'll do it later. Yeah. And it doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. Or I get that vision of I should maybe, someday I'm going to do this. Well, don't wait. Don't, and don't underestimate yourself. You know, if I would have waited or listened to my old garbage tapes, mm -hmm. my book never would have come. Yeah, true. And listen to that voice. Trust it. I believed, I personally believe that writing this book was a gift given to me to share with others. And I guess I'm hoping it empowers them in some way. But I also want women to know, take that risk mm -hmm. and do not be afraid of what might happen. Because if you don't, what might not happen? And, you know, I look at what the doors that is, this is given to me that is open, the wonderful people I have met, yeah. the letters yeah. I have gotten from all around the country, I am just so blessed and thankful. And so take risks. Do not be afraid. So. Perfect. That's perfect. And if someone wants to get your book, 
or find your website, mm -hmm. what do they need to know? Well, the website's really easy. <laughs> treespiritedwoman.com perfect yeah and if you are going to buy the book it can be bought at amazon mm -hmm. any bookstore will order it mm -hmm. beaver's pond press locally bevelo carries it kowalski markets carry it um, there are a number of gift shops up in northern minnesota and around but i guess the quickest way is amazon or they can always email me mm -hmm. and i would love to sign some and send them out and oh i also do book clubs so if anybody's interested in having me come to their book club, I'd oh, love to come and chat. That's a great idea. Well, thank you, Colleen. It was great having you thank here you. today. I'm going to show your book a quick second, and I will also put it on the screen in a minute.